What's up guys? Welcome back to Lick Branch Farms. In today's video, we're going to talk about something that happened in the high tunnel that I've never had happen to me in my whole garden career. And I mean, it can happen to the best of us, but I'm going to show you what that is right after this. Welcome back guys. I'm out here in this new high tunnel that we've been working on and we went in and started putting some beds in. I gotta get some stuff in the ground. I just can't wait any longer. And I got three done so far. Uh, I got a row of slicing cucumbers. These are Corintos. Um, if you've never grown Corintos, you need to give it a try. It is absolutely an amazing cucumber. This thing grows super, super fast. I've also got a row of sun gold cherry tomatoes in. There's a hundred of these guys. There's a hundred of these guys. And I got this row ready this morning. I'm going to put another roll of sun golds over here. We sell a lot of sun gold cherry tomatoes, and I've got some black cherry tomatoes over there. I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm going to do with it. I may put them in here, may not. I don't know. Um, I had my mind made up that I was going to put a roll of cherry peppers, cherry peppers, hot cherry peppers on this side, and I got some bells left over, so I'm probably just going to mix that row up and plant it in here. And I may just as well go ahead and use this row here for... Uh, cherry tomatoes also because I can trellis them up and then run them back down and all this good stuff yeah. That's what I got going on here And I haven't really done anything structurally to this thing yet. I mean, I've been busy out here trying to get stuff in the ground um, All in all I've got just about everything I need I do have to get a few more pieces of pot to make uh, Trusses with so I can run cables all the way down to give me something to trellis to our celebrity plus uh, determinant tomatoes we planted in a couple videos back they have tomatoes all over them you can see in the laying down and they really need to be trellised these this was two rows of mustard greens they bolted so i tilled those in um turnips we're getting ready to go through here and clean this up get to keep the roots and we're gonna get rid of the greens i mean turnips really don't do real turnip greens don't do good in the heat um and we always have this issue but the root will keep forever so it's a good storage crop we're gonna go ahead and harvest those put the roots up and then we'll continue to take those to market all right we got a row of green onions red russian kale and we just now started selling a lot of this stuff and i've got another trade and i'm gonna plant a hundred foot row of it on the other side here in a couple weeks and the first planting of pickling cucumbers and you can see some of them's kind of splotchy um some of them done well some of them didn't do as good and i had to go back and replant those with some younger transplants that i had but all in all there's 150 pickling cucumbers right here and i just finished laying fabric for three more rows and that's going to give us a two week succession planting where these guys start going downhill these guys should be coming on so on and so forth and this whole area here there wind up being 10 rows of pickling cucumbers here 50 plants 50 ish 52 something like that in each row so we go through a lot of pickling cucumbers we sell a lot we use a lot because we pickle uh cucumbers and we sell pickles at market we got a certificate to where um, we can manufacture and sell acidified foods at market all right so lettuce you've seen this past couple videos and if you have been keeping track of it well i better say if you haven't been keeping track of it go back at least just two videos and i want you to see how small this lettuce was this lettuce and you're not gonna believe me when i tell you is less than six weeks old that lettuce right there that mushroom compost that i planted today man that stuff just skyrocketed as soon as it hit the ground took off so a lot of patty pan squash i got some celery i need to figure out what i'm gonna do with but it has been standing up to the 80 degree weather so i'm really i'm really surprised some more lettuce some kale um some cantaloupes watermelons and i got some broccoli over there that i'm not gonna put in the garden i mean it's, it's really too late if it does anything it just grow greens and probably not a, a decent size head got a lot of beets you see me transplant that row no this row a couple weeks ago a lot of radishes carrots about done again starting to replant that stuff so let me show you my issue all right so carry in here you've seen these peppers get planted early last week 
these are mountain magic cherry tomatoes and they are absolutely full of tomatoes if you look in there you can see those and they put on a pretty nice truss is why i'm liking them because you can harvest a lot at one time but over here in this row of cucumbers you can see where i started taking some out well beautiful plants couldn't ask for a better looking plant blooms all over them eat up with blooms Tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of bloom. Not one cucumber. Not one cucumber. Through the whole row. We've harvested five cucumbers off of this entire row since we put these in here three weeks ago. With the amount of blooms, you would figure that you would get more than five cucumbers off of these plants. So here's what I think happened. If you remember when I planted this row of cucumbers, I explained to everybody that this was supposed to be a genosius and a parthenocarpic variety, which means it has all female flowers and it does not need a pollinator to make fruit, meaning that it can self-pollinate. It does not need bees, it does not need bugs, it does not need wind to pollinate the fruit. If that is the case, those guys right there are not genosius and they are not parthenocarpic. So, one of two things happen. Either I got a dud for seed, which is not likely because I have never had this problem, you know, with a variety that I paid that good of money for. B, I planted the wrong variety or I labeled the variety wrong in the tray and planted what I thought was a part in carpet and i tell you that is what i think may have happened i had three different well i say three i had actually four different types of pickling cucumbers and i started at one time now it during that time i was starting anywhere from two to three thousand seeds a day and it is very likely that i mislabel a couple of trays now i was planting cool customer which is another slicing variety that we use in the field I was planting Supremo, another field pickling variety. I was planting the National Pickling Cucumber, which is another field variety that we use. And I was plant, planting uh, Gershwin and I was planting Excelsior for hoop house production or tunnel production. And through the process of starting seeds and moving things in and out of the uh, germination chamber of barn, tunnel whatever when it was cold i did lose two trays of cucumbers to frost i did lose them to the cold weather and in my mind thinking back now i think those were my tunnel varieties that i lost and this was labeled excelsior i did label it excelsior because that's what was on the tray when i brought it in i remember looking at it but me getting in a hurry more than likely and that's what i'm gonna say happened i mislabeled it and what i planted is a field variety that actually needs to be pollinated it needs a pollinizer it is not genosius and it is not parthenocarpic because if you look at these this is a female flower you see that little fruit but the thing is if this doesn't get pollinated it won't make it'll just dry up just like you see this guy here this is a male flower so there goes the whole um, all-female flower deal because I see way more males. This is male. These are male flowers. This is a female flower. This is a female flower that had fruit on it that did not get pollinized. See the difference? And that's what I'm saying. This has got to be. See, that's a female. This has got to be one of my field varieties that I planted. Well, you know. No sense in crying over spilled milk. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all these out. I can't keep these in here because I've got so many blooms in here. Um, their bees would just go nuts trying to come in here and pollinize all these blooms. With all the tomato blooms and stuff that I got going on, it, was, it would absolutely just, it never worked. Um, I could not get the production out of these vines even if I tried um, because of all the blooms in here. I mean, the bee coming here would be like trying to pull a fat kid away from a buffet. You know what I mean? It's just, they got so much work to do. There's no way you could get it done with this raw cucumber. 
So with that being said, that's what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna get these vines cleaned out of here. We're gonna clean this row up. Me and Betsy just made a compost run this morning. So I'm a freshen this bed up and we are going to plant something else here. I don't have any more Excelsior or greenhouse cucumbers going right now. Everything I got is field varieties, which that's what we get ready to plant out here. And I'm gonna take a look at what I do have. And I can tell these are field varieties because of the height on them. But yeah, I've got uh, some Supremo picklings and I've got some cool customers. So I don't want to do that again. I don't want to put those guys in there. Um, I'm sure out of all of these plants, I'll be able to find something that I can utilize in that row. And it's going to have to be something really quick, something that turns really fast because I do have some Excelsior seed coming. And they'll probably be here Monday, Tuesday, but I'm still looking at about three weeks before I can have them ready to go in here. And I don't want to wait that long and waste that time on that row when I could be putting something else in there. I do have a row, I do have some uh, cherry tomatoes that I could put in there and they would, they would absolutely love it because I could trellis those guys in there. And I just, I don't know. So I'm up in the air right now what I want to do with that bed. I could plant lettuce, but really that's a waste of space just for lettuce in a tunnel. Um, I could plant some heirloom tomatoes. I got plenty of those. So I'm kind of up in the air about what I want to do. If you guys got any ideas of what I should try to plant in that row, put it in the comment section below. And while I'm making up my mind, I'll keep checking on that and see if there's something that distracts my interest or, you know, something I could put in here. I do have some eggplant. I got some, uh, what do you call it, Lucinda. It's a purple eggplant. Um, I had actually started for the field but i don't know i'm i'm kind of lost because i don't tunnel space to me is a high-end real estate let's put it that way you don't want to waste it on something trashy but then again you don't want to waste it on something that's going to take forever to produce because it just ties that bed up that much longer got a ton of seeds coming in next week um i went ahead and pre-ordered a lot of fall stuff yeah believe it or not it ain't gonna be long we're gonna be starting our plants for the fall season Yep, I said it. We're going to be starting plants for fall really soon. Uh, Brussels sprouts, things of that nature. But uh, I've got some red deuce. I've got some roadster and red snapper tomatoes. And I think I got another variety. I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to be starting a whole lot more tomatoes here for too much longer. And I'll explain the difference in these varieties when I get them. Because around here, if we just grow a regular old uh, determinate tomato, they won't make it around here because of humidity because of the heat i mean it's just they you have to have something with a huge disease package if you're going to grow it in the summer around here it won't be a total waste because goats love them daisy them's out there standing in the fence now because they know i'm getting ready to bring them something oh. yeah i'm gonna try to keep my eyes open to see if i do actually see at least one cucumber but i don't think it's gonna happen All right, guys, so all the cucumber vines are out of the tunnel and the goats are having a ball with them. Is it good, Bean? Hmm. Yeah. Well, at least it wasn't a complete waste. <laughs> you got a hug on your horns, don't you? She'll figure it out. She runs around, jumps enough, it won't stay on there long. So, yeah. Glad we figured that part of it out. Glad all those are out of there. I'm going to go in there and get some weeding done. And I'm going to try to plant some more pickling field cucumbers this afternoon, later on after supper. So don't miss next week's video. We're going to be starting our okra seed. And if you're not from the south and you don't know what okra is and how to plant okra and all that stuff, you're not going to want to miss this one because okra is something we grow a lot of and it grows really quick. So um, some of the tips and tricks that we use We'll help you in the long run. Yeah. You don't want to miss that one. And we're going to be doing some work on the tunnel here. So definitely check back in with us next week. And if you missed the video from where we started these cucumber seeds or we started um, the pickling and the field cucumber varieties, I'll put a link to it right up here. And if you found anything useful, anything entertaining, or you just want to know more about our farm, click this subscribe button over here in the corner. So I'm going to get off here and get busy. I got plenty to do. But yeah, but guys, we appreciate you stopping by. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.